Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Kotze, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon here at Evergreen Hospital in Kirkland, Washington. And I want to talk to you about rotator cuff tears. First thing to do when we want to understand rotator cuff tears is to look at the anatomy. Here's a picture uh, of someone's shoulder here. And you can see this here is the clavicle or the collarbone here. And this attaches to the shoulder blade. And around the shoulder blade are all these muscles that connect to tendons that go to the ball of your shoulder. And this is what helps power your arm and move it in space. Here's a picture looking at the front. Your collarbone is typically right here. And just to give you a little orientation. And again, here are uh, the tendons. And it's called a cuff of tendons because it's kind of a, a cuff that goes around the entire ball. And they're not separated by any means. They, if you looked at it, it's all one tendon almost that goes all the way around. And each of these tendons is attached to a separate muscle that goes around the shoulder blade. And there are four muscles, and therefore there are four tendons that make up the rotator cuff. Now, if you have an injury to the rotator cuff, people usually start having pain uh, on the side of the arm here, um, or in the front of the arm. As you can see, depending on how you rotate the arm, these tendons can be in the front, or if you rotate it towards the back, it can move towards the back. And when you elevate your arm out to the side here, if you have a tear that's right here, it will move right up to right here. And if you have a little bone spur here, or when it comes into contact there, it can cause more pain when it's straight out. It can also cause more pain because when your arm is straight out at 90 degrees, that puts the most stress on this part of the tendon right up in the front. And it would be no surprise that this tendon right here on the top, since it sees the most stress, is actually the most commonly torn tendon. Now, there are different types of tears uh, in the rotator cuff. There is a full tear, meaning if we just take a, a knife, so to speak, we just kind of cut that tendon all the way through and had a big hole. So you had one side of the tendon was here and one side is there. That is what we call a full uh, thickness tear here, where there the edges are completely separated. Um, but another type of tear is a partial tear. And if we kind of take a cross section, here's the ball here of your shoulder, and here's the attachment side of the tendon. And if the tendon comes up here like this, and it comes up here like this, the thickness of this here is about a centimeter. So if part of this tears, and this here is all torn here. But this part here is still intact. If we make this here. If this part here is still good tendon, that's what we call a partial tear. So just a small portion of that has come off, but there's no hole that goes from here all the way inside to the joint there. So that's what a partial tear is. Now, partial tears can cause almost just as much pain as a full thickness tear. But the good news. Uh, for that is the tendon's not completely detached. Uh, and there are, for ones that are completely detached, there are small tears, medium tears, and really large tears, where the tear goes all the way around uh, the ball here. And you might tear all these tendons, the top and the back, even the front. And the reason it's important uh, is because the bigger the tear, the more weakness you'll have, and the more difficult it is to fix these tears. Now, a real common question is, well, how do you get a tear? And most people think that, well, you get it when you fall, you have a big injury, you get hit hard during a football game, something like that. But it turns out, most commonly, these tears occur just from normal wear and tear. Um, it's almost like uh, your socks. You know, if you wear your socks too much, eventually, you're going to wear a hole on the heel of your sock. And it doesn't happen all at once. It usually just happens slowly over time. But occasionally it can occur if you catch your, your sock on a, on a splinter in the floor, it can rip the sock altogether. So if you have a traumatic injury, you can get a tear. So trauma is, a, is definitely a cause. Um, and it's usually a cause uh, in, um, in younger patients who are involved in, in uh, more dangerous activity. But it can be in, uh, as simple as a fall out on an outstretched arm. Um, and uh, another uh, source of, um, or another cause of rotator cuff tears is if you have a trauma and you actually 
uh, dislocate uh, your shoulder. That is a time when it puts tremendous stress on these tendons and they are actually more likely to tear uh, the older you are. Um, but I would say about 80% of the time people get a tear in their rotator cuff without any injury whatsoever and the onset of pain is usually pretty gradual uh, or you can just wake up one night and start having pain in your shoulder and that's when uh, you find out that you have a tear once you go through the workup and you see your healthcare provider uh, and they um, do a careful history to find out where your pain is and do a careful physical exam. So quickly the diagnosis of a rotator cuff tear uh, is mostly dependent on the physical exam and your provider will um, examine your shoulder and test the strength of your shoulder. So if you really have um, a tear of your tendon the most noticeable uh, finding on exam is a loss of strength. As you can imagine when you try and bring your arm up out here to the side, if there's a tear of this tendon here on the top, you're not going to have the same strength compared to the opposite shoulder. So your provider will probably just compare both sides and see how much strength you've lost uh, before deciding whether you have a tear. Um, now, uh, Strength can be decreased dependent on your pain. So if you have a lot of pain in your shoulder, uh, that can always um, seem like you've lost some strength. So that's, uh, again, uh, something that your healthcare provider will have to uh, decide based on your history and your exam. And the way to diagnose uh, a tear of the tendon besides just doing a physical exam is sometimes you have to get uh, an MRI of the shoulder to actually look at those tendons. Um, sometimes, but rarely, you can actually get an x-ray and you can actually see changes on the x-ray that would suggest that you've had a rotator cuff tear for a long time. But the MRI is probably the uh, diagnostic tool of choice. Another thing that is becoming a little more prominent now is ultrasound because it is relatively cheap uh, and it is quick um, and it can give you an immediate view of your rotator cuff tendon right there uh, in the office. And so that's a quick summary of rotator cuff tears uh, in your shoulder.